Hi there! In this video you will see how AI agents are created, what they consist of and what makes AI agents work better. And why is this knowledge even important? First of all, you will have less hallucination. When you structure your AI agent properly, you will minimize the risk of AI agent sharing like wrong information. Second, of course, better understanding. If your foundation is weak, the whole structure will collapse. Third is enhanced control. So basically, if you don't know what you are doing, your AI agent might do things you didn't intend it to do. But when you know what you're doing, you can guide its behavior precisely. And also I will help you with choosing the right tools. We'll also discuss different types of data so you don't waste your time on some issues, errors. Generally, it will help you understand the best strategy or at least approximate strategy for your specific goal. Before we dive into details, let me shortly introduce myself. I'm Dmitro Norik and I'm founder of AI agency called Silhouette AI which we started one and a half years ago, where I personally developed with these hands more than 40 AI-related projects. These are AI chatbots, AI agents, AI applications, AI automations. So what are AI agents at all? AI agents are advanced AI systems that can execute tasks autonomously. We can differentiate them by autonomy, because they perform tasks without constant user input, as chatbots, for example. They can use tools and they can do reasoning or planning. If you're familiar with AI chatbots but not familiar with AI agents, you can check my previous video where I describe the difference. And you can think, Dima, I was creating things before which included AI and using certain tools. And at some point of it, you could be right, we created AI systems that did actions, I also personally did it. But it wasn't AI who did actions, it was automatic flow that included AI. And it was divided by pieces and AI step and tools were divided, but still they were connected with automation tools. Now this is the AI agent which regulates all of the tools, they are not divided, they connected all together into one big smart system. So previously we had something like if we had a query I want to schedule a meeting tomorrow at 2pm. Uh, firstly we had uh, LLM that analyzed the input. Let's like for example okay. Then we have tool that booked uh, a meeting like Google Calendar. Uh, then we had LLM then again tool and the output. And it could look like this. Uh, this is the blueprint from uh, make.com where you have everything step by step divided. So here you have a LLM, then some uh, logic, also a LLM, then module emake.com, which helped us to create an event or, for example, send an email. But now it looks like this. So we have one big AI agent system that includes tools. So we give it tools to use. It smartly understands whether it should use them or not, whether it should provide the answer without using any tools or you should book a call, or send an email, or any other tools and actions you could think of. Uh, you have AI system, you give it instructions, okay, here in the prompt, you give it an understanding how and when use these tools, you give it a chat memory and reasoning capabilities using AI, and it works as one big system. So we don't have everything divided now, we have one big system that works perfectly. Of course, we give some input and output modules here to integrate it uh, in this example into WhatsApp, but everything other between works as one big system. And here you can also see the difference in prompts. So basically now you should also describe uh, operating process and you also describe what tools this AI agent possesses. As you can see here, uh, it possesses Google Calendar tool. We also describe when to use it, in which cases, and how to use it. Dissimilar for Gmail. This process is similar to the employee onboarding process. You give a person instructions, you give person data, you give it tools to use and instructions on how to use them, which is very similar to the AI system we are talking about right now. 
To build an effective AI agent, you need to focus on four main components. The first one is instructions, or in other words, prompts. This define what the agent does, how it does it, and under what rules. Next, we have data. We have it vectored on non-vectored, which the agent uses to make decisions and to provide certain results. The third component is tools. These include APIs, um, APIs, maybe even whole automations or sub-agents, something that the agent uses to take certain action, to complete the task. And the last one, I put it here because I think it's important, which is workflow integration. Your AI agent needs to be integrated somewhere, right? Is it social media channels or CRM system or other communication platforms or it's your app or web page? And you also need to create it with thoughts that you will make it bigger in the future. So you will have not only one AI agent, but the whole ecosystem with AI agents because you want AI to do more work, okay, to complete more tasks. Let's talk about the backbone of AI agent, which is data. Without high quality data, your agent will fail dramatically. And this would also be main reason why it hallucinates. For practical use, remember that not all of the data created and managed equally, because you have two types. The first one is vectored and we have non-vector data. When data is vectored, it means that it is represented by numbers. So you have text, but it's represented by numbers. It makes AI faster and better understand the meaning behind your words, behind your text. Vector data relies on the meaning. For example, if you ask AI how to reduce stress, it will not just take your words and search for any data that includes word reduce, includes word stress, uh, includes words how to, okay? It will understand the meaning of it. And numerical representation of your text, of your text input, helps it to achieve this. But what if you don't need like AI to understand the meaning behind your words if you want exact specific data? For example, based on account ID, you want to retrieve specific data from the database. Then you go with non-vector data. So if you search on for how to reduce stress, you will get the exact information on how to reduce stress if it exists in your database. The real trick here is to know when to use each. For example, in coaching, you could use semantic data, uh, vector data to understand client sentiment, while non-semantic queries uh, using non-vector data is great for pulling specific client records or I know, progress reports. You can use either both of them for your AI agent or only one of them. And we also understand that if we have AI system, we need to prompt it, we need to give it instructions. And for AI agent, we actually need to describe more things, more instructions, because it has more work to do. If for just for a chatbot, you need to describe your role, objective, context, rules, examples, and notes. For AI agent, you need to describe the process step by step and tools, whether these are sub agents or uh, API tools or different automations. And to make AI understand uh, what tool to use and what tools it possesses and what certain tool does, you include tools description. When you use specific tool for building AI agent, it also has functionality for including tools description. For example, for Gmail tool, you can create the next description. Use this tool to send follow up uh, emails, reminders, or updates to clients and instructions how to use it. And similar for calendar tool. Use it to schedule or schedule or cancel appointments with clients. And here you have some additional instructions. You can give your AI agent like almost everything you want. APIs to allow your agent to interact with external systems. 
This can be sub agents that would perform uh, one specific task. You can also have automated workflows. AI agent can use your automation created in Zapier or Make.com or N810 or even other LLMs. So in certain cases, if you need to use Grok or Anthropic models, you can just add these functionalities to your AI agents and it will do it in specific cases as prompted. And if you create your AI agent, probably you understand what you are creating it for and where it will be placed because your AI agent should be placed somewhere. It can be placed locally on your computer and would perform some tasks like locally on your computer or these can be social media chats. Like imagine having your AI agent integrated directly in WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram, which would handle customer queries, providing product recommendations or upselling. It can also be company software and AI agent can become part of it. You would just insert code there. This also can be customer facing websites or even mobile or web app. And if you think of creating agents for your social media channels or messengers, uh, I can help you with it because this is specifically what I'm focusing on right now. We create customer support agents, sales agents and persona agents that include follow-ups, multi-messaging, it's where your user writes to you like four different messages at the time and you don't want your AI to answer every message, even if it's just an emoji, you answer all of them at once. Chatting style, which is very close to yours, custom tools, custom types of data will help you with everything. Just contact me on Instagram, LinkedIn or book a call and we can do it together. And what can be the tech stack for beginners? For example, you want to build it by yourself, at least try building it, and you need a tax tax. I would recommend starting with NA10 because you can create AI agents there and simultaneously you can create tools that AI agent will use. NA10 itself is automation platform, but it also has abilities of creating AI agents and it will be really convenient for you to use and to start with. For data storage tools, I would recommend Superbase and Pinecon. Superbase can store vectored and non-vectored, aka structured data. Pinecon is only for vector data, but it's really good for vector search. You can also explore Flowwise, which is a user-friendly AI agent builder. Basically, you can build different AI apps uh, with Flowwise, and AI agent is one of the cases. And the model to start with is OpenAI. Then when you become more advanced uh, with your tech stack, with your understanding of AI agents, you can explore different models and different tools to use to build AI agents. In my next video, I will build uh, AI agent using my previously mentioned tech stack. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and if you want to contact me to work together, please write to Instagram, LinkedIn, or please book a call. I'm open to all of the conversations. Thank you for watching this video and bye.